Welcome, everybody. Sorry for being a little bit late here. The elevators are a little more than crowded at times. I'm sure you've experienced that before, too. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. This is uh, the Inside Directing panel with uh, director Kenji Kamiyama. And this is actually the last panel we have of our Japanese guests for this event, so I'm really glad to see that we had a good turnout. Um, hope to have a good discussion here. And uh, without further ado, let me turn the microphone over to Mr. Kamiyama. Hello, everybody. I know we don't have a lot of time tonight, uh, but I'm really glad to be here. My name is Kenji Kamiyama, I'm the director of Japan. Thank you. So today I'd like to take some time to talk to you um, about uh, the show that actually we screened it last night here, uh, 009 Recyborg, um, and to also discuss kind of what I do as a director, um, what my job really entails, a little bit of the insides. So, you know, the job of a director in Japan uh, in the anime industry is not actually that different from that of a normal businessman. I, I come to work every day, sit at the desk, like many of you, um, and uh, I'm there for a, a good core part of hours. So a lot of directors, um, unlike, say, uh, say, film directors, a lot of anime directors are, are very similar to a businessman in that respect. So I try to make it to the office really early, um, maybe about around 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll start to, to do things like, I don't know, read email. But depending on the, the time in, in the whole production, you know, or when things get really busy, um, I won't either have time to check email, or sometimes I only get like three emails that day. So in the normal case of, of animation, um, what happens is, you know, I'll start to receive many, many, many individual original drawings that form the animation, um, and, and they'll start to pile up on my desk. And so I would say probably like a normal workload would be to uh, go through maybe around 200 different cuts of animation in a day, going through and checking. But I'm not just an animation director. I also like to write storyboards, draw storyboards. Um, I also script write as well. So depending on kind of the, the job or the task that I'm working on, my day also somewhat changes. So 
And so like right now I can tell you that I am actually not in any type of a production phase on a project, but we're actually more in the planning phases. And so most of my time these days have, have been spent working with uh, uh, script writers or storyboard artists in different meetings and discussions. But at this time, when I, when I don't have meetings with those people, what we'll do is we'll take the, the inputs or the outputs from those meetings and we're, I'll, I'll reflect that on the plot that I've been building for the story. So it kind of becomes a work day at my desk. And once the plot has been pretty firmed up, that's when we really start into the, the serious script writing. And there are certain times, um, certain projects where I might write the entire screenplay myself. Um, or I may work with a team of writers to accomplish the task. So in the case of like 009, we started off with myself and two other writers, three of us total. Um, but after a certain point, it really just kind of became a, a solo project of myself, some kind of a little bit lonely time, to be honest with you. In the case of a TV series like Ghost in the Shell, um, we'll often use a set of writers, like five writers. And then my role in that type of a capacity is we'll meet weekly, like once a week, and uh, each of the writers will present what they've done so far, and we'll review it together, and I'll provide my inputs, and they'll go back and make it, and modifications as necessary. So in the case like that, um, you know, I, I'm not prescribing every little detail to each of these writers on what they need to do. I provide the, the general guidance on the top and then they, we all kind of work together and, and we exchange ideas and they put forth their own ideas and, and meetings like that sometimes last more than 12 hours in a day. And so, you know, by exchanging those ideas and, and gathering those inputs, we're able to often think of things that maybe we wouldn't have thought of on our own. Um, and putting those together um, kind of helps to create the piece. And once that phase is finished, the next step is really to start on the storyboarding. And so often in the case of a TV series, what we have are actual individual episode directors. And as the director of the series, it's my job to, to work with those episode directors to see what they've been able to put together from the different storyboard cuts. Um, and then I'll take kind of that, that final overview look and, and make sure that the colors seem right and consistency between episodes is maintained. So they got, um, 
五班、五チームから七チームぐらいで大体回すんですけど。So the, the, um... The actual setup is that you're really revolving maybe five to seven different writing teams through, through the cycle. So sometimes a lot of people think that you know if you're the general director of a series and each each episode has its own director, that kind of the, the general director you'd think, well if, if each episode director is doing their job, what do you really have to do? He's like, well, in reality, um, I have to check every single one of these people's output to check for consistency and I'm working every day across many different people. その後ですねあの、コスプレっていう音響だったりとか、編集だったりとかね、そういう作業が入ってくると、週のうちに、編集、えー、とアフレコ、ダビングで3日取られちゃうんですよ。And so, you know, once, once we've kind of got past that stage and we start to add in sound and voices, then three days a week is taken up by editing. And、uh, sound and, and voice inputs. And so, what happens is, depending on the length of the series, whether it's one set, two sets, three sets,、um, it could be like 26 episodes or 13 episodes,、uh, it can take anywhere from one to two years of working on that to prepare every single week. And I'm doing the same thing every day of the week. Non-stop. And so, of course, if, if you think about the requirement of how, how often we have to keep this going, how regularly we have to keep this going, just imagine what happens when I get sick. That, that just, it becomes very exciting. <laughs> But each episode director can really only see me once, maybe twice a week. And I think they probably each individual think, gosh, it must be nice for him. He gets five days a week off. <laughs> これが大体あのテレビシリーズをやってる監督の1年間のスケジュールですね。And that's, that's kind of the life of a, of a director doing a TV series、uh, over you know, course of a year, say. で、009の場合は、その通常の作り方とはちょっと大きく形が違って、えー、手で描くアニメーションじゃなくて、すべて 3DCG で作った作品なので、基本的には今お話ししたサイクルと変わらないんだけれども、それ以外にも新しいあのチャレンジがたくさんあって、これもまたね、なんか本当に未知の体験になったんですね。And so,、um, if I take the case of 009 now,、uh, to compare a little bit, this work was done not in the traditional manner, like、uh, most anime is with, with 2D. This was done completely in 3D. There weren't any pencils used. And so, it,、um, it, overall, the process doesn't really make a huge、um, divergence from, from the standard 2D animation check process, but there are several extra steps that get added in. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm
And so normally, you know, for me, when I finally get a stack of, of animation to, to review, some drawings to review and check, it's finally my own private time where I can be alone. And so it gives me time to really put some, some thought into it and, and uh, try to be objective and, and really think about what we're making. And so um, one of the biggest differences I felt in doing a, a full 3D work is that um, instead of being alone and being able to check this and have time to think uh, to myself, was now I actually, instead of looking at drawings, I have to watch a monitor, a display, um, to do the scene checks. And it's not just myself, but there's a 3D animation director and an animation director. And it's the three of us that are constantly watching this. Um, so I don't really have that time to myself anymore. So if I think about maybe the total number of cuts in 009, um, it's probably around 1,200 different cuts. And so, just think about having to watch all of those 1,200 cuts day in and day out, over and over, until they get it perfect. ステレグラフ、3D の視差がついた状態で大きく分けるとこの4回同じカットを、あの、チェックするので、合計カットを読んだから4000 so, you can think about this for just a minute. Um, it, it, it really, there's a lot more steps in between, but if I can break down uh, with the 3D process, when I'm reviewing, the uh, checking the, the animation, basically, there's really kind of four big um, categories or groups, if you were stages. And uh, the first one would be an anima animatrix, um, animatics, I guess maybe we'd call it, uh, step where it's kind of just a, a very rough movement. Uh, secondly, would be uh, having it rendered down to a cell look. Um, the third one would be what they call structure, which really integrates most of the elements and most of the color. And uh, fourth is uh, the stereography um, with the 3D itself. So if you think about just the number of cuts and the fact that I have to watch them four times, that's, uh, I've seen it 4,800 times. <笑>ね、あの、各工程でも面白い作業と面白くない作業ってあって、アニマティクスの段階ではつるっとした人形が動いてるだけなんで、これをチェックしていくのは結構苦痛なんですね。And so, you know, if you think about it, there are, there, there are definitely more interesting stages than others in this process. And uh, I got to tell you that the animatrix stage, I mean, they're just kind of these these rough blobs on the screen moving, and it's, it's kind of a pain. <laughs> and so you, then I think about, well, at the cell look stage, at least they start to get some hair on them, and there's some color involved, and then when you get the structure involved, the other elements in the in the whole scene, it definitely does become progressively more interesting. And 
そうだな一番やり直したのって何回ぐらいだろうな80回80テイクぐらい同じカットをリテイクされた人とかもいて、まあ、彼もうんざりだったと思うけど僕もなかなかうんざりでもうんでそんなことできないんだみたいなのをずっとやり取りをしたりもしました。So, uh... You know, there's, there's certainly times when the movement just doesn't seem to work right、um, when I'm reviewing this. And、uh, of course, the animator, right, the 3D modeling animator that's, that's moving things, they, they have to redo it, right? They have to do another take.、Um, and if I think about probably one scene that, that took probably the most number of retakes, it, it took over 80 retakes to get it right. And, and I'm sure the animator was really disappointed and frustrated. <laughs> But I gotta tell you, so was I. Why does it take this long to get it right? Some animator, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. For example, a human gesture, the side is the same as the side. そういうところをやっぱり 3D だから片っぽだけ作ってこれをコピーしてこちら側もやるから全く同じ動きがついちゃうんですねそういうのを自然にこう動かしていくっていう少し差をつけたりするっていうことができない人もいるのでそういうのを少しずつ説明してもっとナチュラルな動きにとかっていうのをやっていくんだけどそれができる人とできない人がいてできない人は何回もチャレンジ And so, if you think about it,、um, uh, he, the, the animator would say, I don't know what's so difficult about this. It's, it's not clicking with me. And、uh, if you think about just the human body, right? It, it, it looks symmetrical, but it's asymmetrical.、Uh, and, and so, when you model, it's very common to model one arm, say, for example, right? And they just copy and paste the mirror image to the other side. And so then you have symmetrical movements. And it's not natural if you look at a real, how a real human moves. And so, what you have to do is start to figure out ways to make it move in an, in an unsymmetrical, insymmetrical way, asymmetrical way, to make it look natural. And、uh, there are some animators that get it, and some that don't. And,、uh, you know, it, maybe there's a, a steeper learning curve for some people. But、uh, that's definitely one of the big challenges we faced. The Gaki that's the name, the Matacona Jimo Kaito, Chatu Zeru, the Kate, the Sri D, no Matacona Jimo Kit, and Hontoni Urajina, the Shima, the Soko, Mochish, the Kate. And so, if you think about it, you know, hand, hand drawn animation, just human nature is going to create slight differences between each frame. So, that's, it takes care of itself. But a computer is so precise. That it's identical. So, you know, we had to learn to kind of make it not so perfect. I don't know if you can see the anime, but I don't know if you can see the anime. I don't know if you can see the anime. I don't know if you can see the anime. I don't know if you can see the anime. I don't know if you can see the anime. 吸い込んでしまわないようにうまくポリゴンを調整していくっていう作業がですねこれは非常に細かい作業なんだけどこれは手書きでは絶対失敗しないんだけど 3D ならではのちょっと地味に大変な作業なんですね。Another interesting、um, discovery we made was actually in、uh, it's really nothing that would ever happen in 2D animation. Say、uh, imagine shaking hands, simple gesture like say shaking hands. When you draw it,、um, it's going to look Pretty natural. But the problem we ran into with 3D modeling is you'd have two characters and their hands would come together, except they would come together too much and it would be digging into the hand of the other person. And so what happens is you have to go back to the model and you start, have to start tweaking all the different polygons in a way so that the two hands can interlock in a more complete and natural method. And it sounds, sounds tiny, right? But it's these little details that, that create. The feeling of, of making it feel natural. Now, 
抱き合っててすごいシリアスなんだけどフランスの胸がこう上等で一緒になっちゃったりとかそういうのをね細かく直していくっていうのはすごく。So you know, one one particular example I can give you is if you've seen the movie. Um, there's a there's a love scene between Francois and Joe um, on the airplane, and uh, you know they'll come and they'll embrace, and, and their silly things happen, right? Like her chest will actually go into his chest. <laughs> so it's it's making those types of adjustments that was um, challenging and complicated, but obviously very important. 一人一人のキャラクターが派手なアクションをするカットの方が作りやすいし、アニメーターも楽しかったんじゃないかなと思います。So I think if I, if I think back on it, right, each scene where you had an individual character in an action scene was actually really easy to make,、um, and I think it was very fun for the animators to do as well. なかなかこう出来上がらなかったカットとかもこう風に洋服がなびくだけとか、ね、そういうカットがなかなかうまくいかない。And so, what's, what's kind of ironic is some of the scenes that you see that are maybe you would think at first would be a very simple scene with somebody standing in the wind blowing their scarf a little bit. You think, oh, that's pretty easy. No, what happens is the scarf starts going crazy and doesn't. Mesh well, and then it's in their neck or in their shoulder. It's not laying properly. So it's these really simple-looking scenes that actually gave us the biggest headache. <laughs> So, up to this point, it's pretty, pretty basic, right? I mean, you get the model and you render it down. Done except we didn't stop there because we needed to make it 3D. And in Japan,、um, there really isn't a, a lot of people with a professional stereographer. And so, what happened is myself and、uh, my animation director ended up、um, through a lot of trial and error needing to sit down and go through it and figure out the right way to do things. 通常のアニメーションが完成するまでの大体1日12時間ずつぐらいチェックをしてたんだけど最後 3D の,その示唆をつけている作業があった頃には1日18時間僕はもう 3D メガネをかけたままですねスタジオでチェックをしているという感じでした。It's up until the point before we started the 3D stereoscopic work I would say that I probably spent about 12 hours a day Wearing 3D glasses in front of a monitor, sitting and watching all day. But then, when we added the stereoscopic part and we needed to、um, check even more, I would say that we were probably sitting there for 18 hours solid. The stereograph is a very difficult thing. The stereograph is a very difficult thing. これはあまりアメリカでも発表されてないと思うんですけどもあの40ピクセルっていう単位のモニターに対して、ね、ピクセル数を40以上あの示唆って同じ例えば手があるとこれをこずらしてやるとずらしていくと立体に見えるんですでずらせばずらすほどこう示唆がつくんですけどこれを40ピクセル以上離してはいけないんですね。So,、um, one of the biggest challenges when you start to use the, the stereoscopic、um, technology is it's really considered depth of field, your depth of vision. And、uh, the way it works is, is you actually have to take two images that are overlapped and you have to start to separate them. And the more you separate them, the deeper and more 3D it feels. And what we started to discover is there's actually, there's actually a limit to how far. You can separate it and still 
keep it natural. And I don't think this has really been talked about much, even in America yet, but we discovered um, magic number 40 pixels. And so, at first, we didn't know that 40 pixels was this, this magic number, right? So we thought, okay, the sky's in our background and, and something's way off in the distance. That's really far away. So, naturally, let's, let's separate it even more. Um, and so we thought, wow, what a huge depth of field. It looks great. It's working really well. We're good, right? And so uh, what we discovered is um, if you end up doing all thousand cuts that way, uh, we, we heard from the technicians that people will just end up vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> And so um, we actually were able to work with an individual, a Japanese individual, who worked on the 3D version of Avatar. And, um, and you know, he, he provided us a five minute short cut of a, of a piece of video that had a hundred pixel separation. And I was watching it, and not very far into it, I had to tear off my glasses because I felt so sick. And so, um, you know, Avatar, they didn't know about this 40 pixel limit when they made it, so I'm pretty sure that there are some cuts in there that definitely go beyond closer to 100, maybe beyond, but uh, you know, he said that you can't go beyond 100, right? Um, and, and when I go back and I watch Avatar now in 3D, um, I, I definitely think that there are definitely some scenes that didn't work well because of that. And so we, we didn't discover this till later, right? But we're thinking, why why is 40 pixels seem to work great? Um, it, it, and it really comes down to the way our bodies are, are designed and, and our I believe the depth of vision for our eyes actually synchronizes much better with a depth of field of only about 40 pixels as it related to the screens we're using. And so what we learned was that, um, you know, if you think about it, you look off into the distance, I'm looking now, right? The microphones look really 3D to me, but the people in the back, they visually they don't look that 3D. Um, they're also not nearly in this focus um, from my perspective right now. And if you simulate this in actual 3D correctly um, with, the, with the depth of vision that that surpasses the possibility of your human eye, that's when it starts to get weird. Animation, 
つけても大丈夫そうじゃないですか全部ピントが合ってるから。And you think, you think that, you know, even if it's a live action film or an animation, probably even more than a live action film, animation is, is just hand drawn stuff, so we should be able to do that, right? Are you guys familiar with the works of、uh, MC Escher? <laughs> And so, in his works, you can look at it and you can tell that if a person is walking towards you, normally they should be getting bigger, but they're not, they're getting smaller. 3D の視察というのはあれと一緒で、画面に対して被写体の大きさが変わらないのに、お客さんに対して飛び出していくと、小さくなっちゃうんですね。And so it actually relates really closely to the 3D technology with the TVs, in that,、uh, you know, even with the depth of field, they should be coming out and getting bigger, but they're really the same size, they're really the smaller size. So it creates、uh, an imbalance. And so you think about maybe Transformers, have you seen it in 3D, and, and they come out and they reach the screen? Their hand should be ginormous. But Kind of looks a and have you, ever never, have you never felt that maybe if you see a helicopter in 3D and it's flying, that sometimes it doesn't look like a model sitting there in front of you instead of being this ginormous object? Yeah, if a real helicopter is here right now, it's probably not this big in your field of vision. No, it should be from, from that wall or this wall or beyond. And, and, and for that reason, it, it's just it's not sticking out the you know, proper way. And so you may have noticed a trend、um, in, into which things don't necessarily jump out at you as much, but rather the background sinks away from you more. And I think that's, this has a lot to do with the reasons for the switching. And so, you know, if you think about it, really, we have to still do all of this movement within the 40 pixel range. Whether it's in front, it has to be within a 40 pixel range. If you're sinking it back, it still has to be within a 40 pixel range. And for us, in the making of 009, you know, stereographers, they're just not available in Japan. And so it, it probably ate up more than a month of our schedule just trying to discover this fact. And so, you know, one other difference,、uh, one other challenge that we faced is,、uh, is you know, when you're doing 3D, you, you need to be able to create two images,、um, but they need, to, they need to be the same, but they also need to be shifted slightly. ちょっとこのマークの位置がちょっとこうこっちだけずれちゃうだけで
とても気持ち悪い絵になってしまうのでそこがシンプルだからこそアニメーション難しいんです。And so you think with animation being pretty much simple line drawings with color on it, that it would be pretty simple to make two images that are exactly the same and shift it slightly.、Um, but as, as it turns out, it's actually the opposite.、Uh, with, with real live footage,、um, with actual live action footage, there's so much information on the screen. If things are a little bit off, you can forgive it. But with animation,、um, and if you just take, for example, these two bottles,、um, if this mark is slightly rotated or slightly off, From the other one, what happens is when you start to look at this, that part that's off, that line that's just a little bit off, really starts to annoy you and it just it distracts so bad from the picture that you, you can't get around it. We call those the predators. <laughs> So we'll put on our 3D glasses and we'll be reviewing the, the, the cuts. Something is weird here. What is it? <laughs> Must be a predator on the screen. <laughs> But the amazing thing is there's some people who can realize that, and other people it just doesn't phase them at all. And so there are certain animators who they've tried to look at this and figure out, well, what, what is the, where's the predator? I can't see it. What is it? And they, they're never able to find it. And so I guess, fortunately, or maybe even unfortunately, I was really good at finding predators. <laughs> so I had to sit there myself for over 18 hours a day looking for these things non stop. But you know, after a while, I got to tell you, I kind of didn't get fun. I don't know if I got a high on it or something, but.、Uh, <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm going to find these guys. I know I can. And then the cool thing for me is that I don't, it doesn't make me nauseous. I can just keep them on forever and I'm good. And so, you know, doing that for about a year at the end, I'm finally able to make 009. アメリカのその 3D 協会からあのとてもいい 3D だというふうに評価をしていただきました。And so I, you know, I guess I can be proud of the fact that you know I'm very confident in my 3D abilities now, and、uh, and actually I've also been complimented、uh, and received、uh, high high compliments on the quality of the 3D work in 009.、Uh, そんな苦労をして作った009をあの。Okay, so,、um, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time talking about the process and how to make it. And,、uh, you know, I'm sure there are several of you in here that saw the movie last night.、Um, and,、uh, I didn't have much time to talk about any questions on the content of the show, the actual story itself.、Uh, so, if anybody in here has any questions that they'd like to ask me, whether it's about the story or about the content,、um, I'll be happy to answer them in the few minutes that we have left. This one's not about 009, but、uh, I was just wondering if you Most of you, but it's hard to hear. Oh, sorry.、Um, I just want to know how the directing process is different when you have a show that's based on a series of light novels like Sede and Moribito,、okay. and、um, or one versus based, based on a manga, manga. or if there is a difference. Yeah, if there is a
あの小説をアニメ化する場合はあの文字からイメージを作っていかなければいけないのでそのキャラクターをどういうデザインするかとかその世界観をどうするかとか例えば橋が出てくるって小説で書いてあってもその橋がどのくらい大きいのか小さいのかっていうそういうところから決めていかなければいけないので。作業としては小説をアニメ化する方が大変です。So I think、um, if I compare start,、uh, trying to make a work based off of a manga or based off of a、uh, light novel or a novel, right?、Uh, a novel doesn't really have images with it. So it, it's a little more challenging, I think, because you might have something where、uh, you have to think of how the character should look. And there may be some descriptions, but there's definitely some discrepancies on interpretation. Um, additionally, they may say a bridge is, is supposed to be depicted, but they may not describe exactly how long or how wide or how, how big the bridge actually really is. So, from that aspect, I think it's a little bit more challenging to、uh, create a work、uh, from a light novel than, than a manga. The manga is a little bit more challenging. 原作と違うというところファンの方からはいろいろ意見が出るので漫画を作ってそこは大変です。But you know, even though、uh, I said that there's also a challenge involved with manga, right? Because what happens is the style of art can differ, and there can be a lot of、um, very enthusiastic fans of the original works, and They will not hesitate to share their opinion、um, <laughs> with you. And, and there are times where it's good and sometimes where it maybe conflicts. And、uh, so, even though technically it's, it's easy to make a work, easier to make a work from a manga、uh, visually, sometimes it's more challenging to appease audiences. Okay. Okay. Well, there are a lot of references in the movie to、um, politics. Okay, so the question was there are, let me make sure I get it right,、uh, there are a lot of references to、uh, religion and government、uh, and what was the other item? Just human nature in general. And, and what was your key message that you were trying to project or, or tell the audience? So,、yeah. um, as you mentioned, right, we do, I do, do bring up、um, various politics,、uh, various government issues,、uh, religion.、Um, I, use, I use God, it's not a specific religion that I'm, I'm indicating, just using it as kind of a general greater being.、Um, but I think probably the key message that I wanted to portray in 009 is really,、um, it's really how each of us as individuals can think and, and process. Uh, information and figure out how to make the world a better place and,、um, and, and how to make everybody in the world happy. And I think for each of us,、uh, what we can do and knowing what we can do and knowing what maybe what we think we should do,、uh, I think that was kind of the key message. So I wanted each of us to think about what we believe is the right thing to do and then what we can do to, to actually accomplish that. 
That was probably the biggest message um, generally that I wanted to convey. I, I can't hear you. Can you maybe stand up and speak louder? So, which hand-drawn animation, hand -drawn animation hand -drawn versus hand -drawn computer? Drawing the sets and such, and computer generated entirely. So, which do you think is uh, the better quality product? The better quality? quality? Yeah, which you have product. Okay. As a person, person From a technical aspect, I think that um, still, at least in Japan, I think that hand-drawn animation um, probably still has a higher quality to it. And so, um, you know, I do think though that 3D animation uh, technology and, and awareness is increasing pretty rapidly in Japan, and there are more and more people learning 3D animation. And probably soon, if somebody wants to become an animator, it's going to be more effective for them to learn how to become a 3D animator than a traditional 2D animator. And uh, maybe, maybe t not even 10 years, probably maybe just even several few years uh, from now, we're gonna see a turning point where that ratio shifts um, in, in, from the quality, uh, shifting more toward the 3D side. Okay, I think we're... Okay, well, uh, we're just about out of time, but we'll take one more question. If it's a short one, short questions? Uh, I was going to ask, it's not a favorite question, but what uh, other anime directors, contemporary or older, does he respect and what does he respect about the specific style? Okay. Okay, so the question is, um, what other animation directors does uh, Mr. Kamiyama uh, respect and uh, what is it that he respects about their particular style? So I think probably first and foremost I must say is, is director Mamoru Oshii. I can consider him really my mentor in many ways. I think um, another individual, is, he even he announced his retirement today, if you're not aware, right, is, is director Miyazaki. I think everybody involved in the animation industry in Japan really does appreciate and, uh, and respect him uh, for his role. And if I was to name somebody that's probably closer in age to myself, um, I think everybody's heard of uh, Cowboy Bebop, right? So the director of Cowboy Bebop, Mr. Shinichiro Watanabe, I, I really uh, respect his work as well. And uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us, but uh, Mr. Satoshi Kon. あとは本当にどのディレクターも素晴らしいし、個性もあるし、人間の才能があるということでも、
そういった人たちがごっつを造形してますねあとそうだな、ね、人間にすごく造形してるのはエヴァンゲリオンのあの日であるかと And uh, again, I mean, there's, there's actually a lot more that I can continue to name.、Uh, well, one of the ones maybe that comes to mind is uh, director uh, uh, Anno of Evangelion, Hideo Anno. More than maybe respect, it's, it's more of like a h a i l to me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very, very much.、Uh, I hope you enjoyed the panel t o d a y One second.、Um, is there an event right after this? Does anybody know、yes. in this room? Yes, there actually may not be. Oh, okay. Then, for those of you interested, why don't we meet out in the hallway, okay? And we have some gifts、uh, that we would like to give out. I don't think we have enough for everybody, but we'll do what we can.、Um, if you received one earlier today, please keep that as your gift. <laughs> Share the wealth. If, if, you had, if you had raised your hand for a question, by all means, we're there. Line up, line, make a line, form a group, or whatever, and we definitely have stuff to give you. And whatever we have left over, we'll hand out to whoever stays、um, until it's gone. Okay?、Uh, so、but let's go ahead and clear the room as quick as we can so that we don't delay anything further. But thank you again very much.